now. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, so if you don't mind, I'm going to use the five minutes for something that has nothing to do with the talk. So we have five more minutes before the talk. And so I'm going to fit in something that I did not plan to uh, talk about initially. But you know, I thought that uh, you might be interested in that. So it's about physics. What do you know about physics? Do you think that quantum mechanics, general relativity, these kind of things, is complicated? Probably, yeah, probably you know, a fair, fair bet to think that it's the basic. Um, now, it turns out that I believe I'm actually foolish enough to think that I know how to unify quantum mechanics and general relativity. And I'd like to show that to you in five minutes. And because it's really computer science tricks, it's really a stuff that we know how to do, and we have not, just not noticed we knew how to do it. So I'm going to use a very complicated device called a smartphone. And I'm going to do an experiment with it. Do you, does anybody object to being filmed here? Nobody? So I'm going to do a recording here. And as you can see, I'm moving like this, right? And then I'm going to spin my smart smartphone like this, because it's funny. OK, then I stop the recording. And can any of you predict what appears on my screen here? You probably safely think that it's going to show rotations like this, and then a rotation like this, right? So let me ask you a question. Why do you see that result on the pixels here? Where does that come from? That comes from the fact that my camera here recorded the probability of presence of photons. And the fact that you see it on the screen means that you have the probability of presence of photons predicted on the screen by various algorithms, MP4 encoding, and so on. So we have a functional equivalent of the wave function. We have quantum mechanics. But then it moves. It rotates. When you see the picture rotate, does it rotate because I move my smartphone? Do the pixels rotate? No. In a video game, in a 3D video game, when things move, we compute all that. So this means we, as computer scientists, know how to do rotations and all the transformations that you have in relativity, including the general relativity ones. So we know how to model that as well. It's all discrete as long as you give up the idea that the universe has a space and time that actually exists. If you accept the idea that you just measure stuff with photons and that it's all discrete, it's all measurements, then unifying the two is completely easy and you can do it in five minutes. And now I can start the talk itself. <laughs> I don't think I should introduce you. You already did it. Hey, okay. Very welcome. Uh, computer games, computer animations, uh, and today cloud sysadmins. So uh, I'm curious to hear your talk. And uh, if you can't stop in time, then there will be no Q&A. But I think you know, the, you know the thing. We'll give you a sign if it's uh, 10 minutes before time Yes. and five minutes before time. And if you have questions along the way, please raise your hand. and. I'm really OK with having the questions as we go. It's, uh, it's fine okay. with me. Cool. So I'll try to keep an eye on you. We have 30 seconds to go. And by the way, if you scan the QR code here, you can download free books, one in English, one in French, that explain what I just told you with the equations in 500 pages for the English versions. So, and source code and examples and stuff. And it's free download. So now we are on time, so let me start. 
Um, so hi, I'm Christophe de Dinchin. I'm a senior principal software engineer working for Red Hat on confidential computing. Uh, my GitHub is C3D, so you. Have